Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, and I am at the iconic Dirtfish Rally School in Snoqualmie, Washington. Now, GM contacted me and loaned me one of their awesome cars. I have the Cadillac ELR here, so I'd be stupid not to review it. Now, they asked me, you know, to kind of be gentle on it and not take it in the dirt, so I'm gonna do my best not to. This doesn't count as dirt, right? <laughs> All right, guys, here we have it. It's the 2014 Cadillac ELR. Now, this is basically the big brother to the Chevy Volt, which I already own, and my wife absolutely loves this car. The car itself has an electric power plant in it that powers the drivetrain with two electric motors producing 207 horsepower and roughly 299 foot-pound torque. So it's not a slouch. Unlike a conventional car, these cars are always running off of electric. The gas electric hybrid system, the motor is basically just a generator that provides power and works in concert with the batteries. This particular car only has a 1.4 liter Ecotec engine in it, producing 84 horsepower. It doesn't seem like a lot, but when you couple that with the battery and them working together off of the charge, it produces a lot of power. Now the car isn't by any means lightweight. The car itself weighs over 4,000 pounds, which is, I mean, pretty beastly weight, but you'd never know from driving it. It actually handles like a dream, and it's a very, very smooth experience, which you'd expect from a Cadillac. Now, I wouldn't exactly call this a fast car. It's zero to 60 time is 7.8 at best when you're using both the gas engine and the batteries to power the electric motor. If you're just running off pure electric, it's gonna be 8.5 seconds. However, it will do the quarter mile in 15.8 seconds, whereas that isn't super fast, it isn't exactly slow. All right, well now you guys have heard all the numbers, but you know what, really none of that means anything. What we really need to do is get in this thing and actually drive it, because at the end of the day, the numbers don't matter, it's the experience, so let's get to it. Now, I've been driving this car for four days. It's actually been my daily driver, and I've been enjoying every minute of it. The coolest feature about a car like this is that the first 37 miles of range are just off electricity. So you plug your car in every night, it charges up, you drive it, as long as you only drive 37 or less miles a day, you're not burning a drop of gas. But if you do need to go further than 37 miles, you can actually use the gas generator, and that can extend your range to up to 340 miles. Now another thing that's really cool is because you're, if you're driving under 37 miles a day or not that much over it, you're not running the gas powered motor that much in the car. And because of that, you save a ton of money on oil changes. Like for instance, my wife's Chevy Volt. We've owned it for over a year and we still haven't come up on its first oil change. Now one of my all time favorite features on this car after driving it for four days is these paddles behind the steering wheel. All you do is you pull on the paddle like you're gonna downshift and it slows the car down like you did actually downshift. It's actually really, really cool. And it decelerates the car rapidly without you having to put your foot on the brake. But the best part about it is you're not just slowing the car down, you're putting that power back into the batteries. So you're actually making your driving more efficient and you get to play a part in it, which is really cool. Now where this really shines is when you're coasting down steep hills. Like I'm about to hit a pretty steep hill right now. All I have to do is just touch this little paddle on the back of the steering wheel, release, touch it again, release, and the car, you know, I can keep the car at a relatively constant speed, and I can look at my gauges, and my gauges say I'm putting 44 kilowatt hours back into the battery, or 44 kilowatts of power during the time that I'm holding that paddle. And so you're helping to increase the range of the vehicle. I think that's really cool. And the other thing is the brakes in this car feel like real brakes. And the Chevy Volt, it feels like a balance between the brakes and the regenerative braking, and it's actually very, very tricky and finicky. Um, I really like that this car has very, very good feeling, real brakes. And then if you want to do the regenerative thing, it's on you. you. You control it. It's about the only thing on this car that the computer doesn't take everything away from you. Now this car has some really cool gizmos. Like right now I'm backing out of a parking spot. And you can see on the little screen here, I'll give you guys a little view. It draws little lines telling you exactly where the car is going. That way you know you're not gonna hit anything, which is cool. And if you do get a little too close to something, it's not a big deal because there's vibrating motors in the seats, like multiple vibrating motors, that'll vibrate different quadrants of your derriere uh, depending on what you're about to hit. Now, you have a couple different driving modes. You just push a little button down here in the center and it can flip through them. You have Tour, you have Sport, you have mountain and you have hold. Now in tour mode, that's your 
default mode that you have when you turn the car on initially. And it basically just uses the battery until the battery runs out and then it kicks the motor on if it needs it. So it's your most efficient mode for just cruising around. Then if you push it again, you go down into sport mode. And what sport mode does is it starts up the engine, it uses the power from both the batteries and the engine to give you the maximum acceleration. It also sharpens up the throttle response on the pedal significantly. Yeah, it, it puts you back in your seat pretty good. Now if you go into mountain mode, what mountain mode does is if you're going up a bunch of hills and down hills and everything like that, it tries to use as little battery as possible to conserve your charge so that when you get into town and stuff like that, you can use your battery where it has the highest impact. Stop and go traffic, flat ground, things like that. And then finally, you have the hold mode. And what the hold mode does is say, don't use the battery, like use it bare minimum, use the battery, just use the motor so that you can conserve your battery power for as long as you want. Basically keep your batteries topped off for as long as you're ready to use them. Now, as you'd expect in a car like this, everything on it's pretty much automatic. It has automatic high beams. They click on and click off when cars approach you, so you don't have to worry about that. If it rains, it has a rain sensing windshield, so the windshield wipers just come on and go off. Now. Optionally, you can control all that stuff if you'd like to, but the car will take care of it for you. It'll even turn your headlights on when it gets dark. And all of those settings are configurable through the Q system. Now, Cadillac Q is a little bit of a, a combination of voice activated controls, hand gestures, and actually this capacitive touch screen here and all the controls. It's basically, they all work together so that you can control the car with the minimal amount of interaction possible. Like for instance, if I want the menu to show up on the screen, all I have to do is swipe my hand in front of it like this, and the menu options will show up at the top of the screen. Otherwise, they go away so that you get more screen real estate for you know looking at other things. Also, there's a voice command system, but I'm gonna be honest with you, I found it to be very, very leggy and inaccurate. So the voice control, I actually wasn't too impressed with. Here, I'll give you an example. Command, please. Tune radio to 1061 FM. 106.1 FM, correct? Yes. Now notice, it did get it right, but it took five seconds for it to respond back. That's really annoying because every time it gets something wrong, that's five more seconds you have to wait. The car also has absolutely no problem climbing hills. That's what I love about that electric high torque motor is you're going up a hill, this is a 4,000 pound car, you'd never know it by how it responds. Now, where the voice system kind of fell short on this car, I found that OnStar actually worked brilliantly. Connecting to OnStar. This call may be recorded for quality purposes. Thank you so much for calling on today. This is Jalisa. How may I help you? Yeah, can I get directions to the closest Starbucks? You sure can. Now, before I download these directions, is there anything else I can do for you today? That'll be it. Thank you. You're welcome. You have a wonderful day, and thanks so much for using on today. You too. Destination is being sent to your vehicle. When safe and appropriate, Press the go button and follow the instructions on your navigation screen to begin your route. Your OnStar call has ended. Goodbye. You can call them and get them to do just about anything, like answer questions, give you directions. They can download them right to the navigation on this thing. And the nav is great. Once you get the address actually programmed into the navigation, it shows you right on the gauge cluster where to turn and it gives you a little bar that tells you how close you're getting to the turn. And then it shows you the map on the screen in the center. So the combination of all those things make the navigation absolutely amazing. I just found trying to put directions in vocally didn't work very well for me. Um, so I just hit the OnStar button, called those guys up and they took care of it for me. So the car has dual zone climate controls. You can adjust the temperature that's coming out of your vents and the passenger can change theirs independently. The seats also are heated and you can change those to auto or put them on whatever mode you want. And the steering wheel can even be heated with the touch of a button. It heats up really fast too, I was surprised. Now, as you'd expect on a car this expensive, everything on it's automatic. It's got radar guided cruise control. So you can basically just lock onto the car in front of you, push your button and you just match their speed. It's that simple. They slow down, you slow down. They accelerate, you accelerate. It's actually quite cool. It also has lots of warnings on it too. If somebody's coming up on your left or right when you're attempting to make a lane change, you'll get a visual indicator in your mirror and then if you try to change lane and there's an obstruction there, you'll get a vibration in your seat that'll remind you really quick to steer back. Now I'm gonna be honest, while I was test driving this car, 
it actually saved me once because I was doing a lane change because I wasn't used to the visibility out of this corner window back here. And the indicator definitely let me know that there was a car there and I immediately swerved back in my lane and the guy went bolting by me. I would have clipped him. Now, speaking about safety features, this thing has more airbags in it than a hot air balloon convention. It's truly remarkable how much technology is on this thing. And even after driving it for four days, I'm still discovering new things. Now, you can also sync your cell phone up to it and use Siri through the microphone and the stereo system. Now, of course, you can issue it navigation commands also, but it can't download the navigation commands here. So what I found is I would tell Siri to give me directions, then I would just hand type them into the nav. And that seemed to be my best solution. Now, you might actually have a better experience using the voice commands, because I know sometimes these things are finicky about voices, but I just find that my iPhone is much faster to respond. It gets the commands right more times than this system did. But aside from that, I noticed that the actual controls here for going through your radio and your phone and your navigation, it's actually really snappy on screen when you're touching everything. So that's awesome. That's what I would expect. But the voice command stuff, I'm not really sold on it. Now, pretty much everything's at your fingertips too. Let's say you don't wanna mess with the screen here. You can actually use these little levers and hold them sideways to select and you can go down to your phone, you can go down to the radio, you can select the radio, you can tell it which station you wanna tune into. So the XM works really cool and I love that it shows everything that you need to see in the center of the gauge cluster. And you can even change the gauge cluster too. So you can even hold over to settings, go down and say, I want a different gauge. And you can switch between two classic modes and two modern modes. And the classic modes actually give you a dial like a conventional car that shows you like zero to a hundred uh, and so on. Or you can do the modern mode where it just shows you the digital or a combination of both. That's pretty cool. I like the whole configurable heads up display. That is awesome. Again, I'm going down a hill just using that paddle to slow me down, putting massive power back into my batteries. I love it. But yeah, the navigation's good. This is the most comfortable place I've ever been. You have leather everywhere. You have this like suede leather up here on the pillars, leather on leather. You have a carbon fiber, you have wood. It's awesome. And the seats are the most comfortable seats I've ever sat in. These leather seats are so adjustable. You have like a two-way lumbar adjustment. You can tilt it like this. You can go up and down, back and forth. And best of all, once you get all your settings and you can even move the steering column, look at this. The steering column freaking moves. It freaking moves. Up and down and in and out. So once you get that dialed in, you can just push a little button over here on the door and save your settings. And then every time you get into the car, all you do is open the door, push that button, all your stuff goes back. Your radio stations, all your preferences, where the wheel sits, where the seat sits, everything. I had my wife tried it out. She really liked it because she's a lot taller than me. So she sets up everything completely different. All I do is push that button, all my mirrors, seat, everything go back to where they're supposed to be. Every single car should have that. Okay, now if all those gadgets weren't James Bond enough for you, this will give you an idea of just how much effort they went to put electronics on everything. Look, this is the cup holder, right? You pull on it, motor takes over. You push it the other way, it closes. You can even stop it halfway and just play ping pong with it. And you wanna store your sunglasses or contraband? <laughs> just touch under there. This door flips up. You got a big, huge pocket in here with a USB port so you can put your cell phone in there and charge it and everything while you're driving. And just touch here and it closes. I completely found that by accident. You also have LED lights here. You have LED headlights, which I think are really, really cool. I've never been, I've never had the visibility in any other car than I've had in this thing. It's been absolutely amazing. Now, as far as the people sitting in the back, they're really comfortable seats, but I'm not gonna lie, there's no leg room in the back. You know, you gotta have some pretty thin legs to fit back there or have like some very short people driving up front. Now, one of my favorite features on this car is the stereo. It sounds fantastic. Let me go ahead and switch over. I'm gonna go ahead and just play some music off my iPhone. It's sunk up, it automatically finds my library. All right, let's turn it up. The bass sounds fantastic. You guys probably aren't gonna be able to tell because of my crappy audio equipment, but it's got a huge subwoofer that you can see through the back window. It shakes all the mirrors. It's awesome, it's like having an aftermarket stereo system. It also has a very quiet ride, and as you'd expect from a Cadillac, it's a comfortable ride. It's very, very smooth, a lot smoother than the Volt, a lot quieter than the Volt, and best of all, it handles phenomenally. Even when we had it on some questionable surfaces, it actually handles really, really well. I let my wife drive it the other night, and she came back and she wanted to trade her Volt in for it because she said it handles fantastic. She said compared to the Volt, it handles so much better. And I'd have to agree with her. In cornering and stuff like that, it feels much more solid. You feel much more connected with the road. So in a nutshell, guys, I really, really have fallen in love with this car after driving it for four days. I honest to God, hand on heart, wish that I could keep it. But unfortunately, I can't. 
This is a pretty spendy vehicle. They're asking price MSRP $75,000. I know, I swallowed a little bit when I saw that too. But it is a high-end Cadillac. Everything's leather, you got wood, carbon fiber, every single radar in the world on it, every single automatic gizmo. This thing, this car basically just drives itself. It's, it's just the world's biggest computer on wheels. And I wish I could own one. But if you're looking for a sports car, this is not a sports car. A lot of people were asking me when they saw it, they're like, hey, is that that really fast Cadillac? I think they were talking about like the CTSV because they, they have a similar look to them. And you know, I'd have to tell them, no, it's, it's not. It's actually an electric car. And they're like, what? I mean, they can't tell the difference. And you know, I thought that that was pretty cool, but you know, again, it is an electric car. This is for somebody who wants a comfortable, quiet ride. You want to be environmentally conscious. You don't want to burn a bunch of gas. You don't want to be getting your oil changed all the time. And you just want to be pampered. If your goal in life is to go 150 miles an hour and you're all about the speed, this is not the car for you. Also, just for the record, 99% of this review, I stayed in uh, sport mode, because sport mode's awesome. <laughs> you definitely notice quite a bit of difference in the throttle response. And uh, and when my wife drove it, I tried to get her to put it in sport mode, and she wouldn't. She refuses to use sport mode. I don't know what is wrong with that woman. Well, this car just keeps on surprising me. I uh, had a guy slam on his brakes in front of me, and I noticed that there's like a projector on the dashboard that projects like a red brake light up on the window. So if the person behind you has tail lights out or brake lights out and slams on the brakes, you still get a visual warning to slam on the brake pedal. And boy, did it work. I got on that brake pedal. So like I said, been driving this thing for four days and I'm still finding new stuff every time I get in here. I do genuinely like this car though. It is a very comfortable place to be. If I had the choice of this or like my Subaru STI 380 horsepower manual to go on a trip, I'd pick this. If me or my wife had the choice between the Volt and this, I'd pick this. Well, one thing I don't like about this car or any electric vehicle is they don't make any sounds. So what you gotta do is get yourself a friend who can make the sounds for you. You ready? Ready. Let's go. We're on dirt. Okay, we're going up on some hard braking right here. All sound effects make everything better. All right, well, there you guys have it. It's the 2014 Cadillac ELR. This thing has been a blast to drive, and I wanted to have a special thanks to GM for loaning me the car to review, especially since I already have a Chevy Volt. It's really cool to test out the big brother, let's be honest. And a huge thanks to Dirtfish Rally School for allowing me to use their facility. This place is absolutely gorgeous. And on top of that, I've been here for like three of their rally classes. If you've ever wanted to drive a car at speed off-road, this is the place to do it. And I also really, really want to thank the guy holding the camera right now, Mr. Jason. And a special thank you to Timmy Tech TV for loaning him to me because he is technically property of Timmy Tech TV. So make sure you check out Timmy Tech TV because his property is taking this video right now. And over there is Bruce. That's my old boss from Microsoft who now just follows me around with a camera like a creepy guy. And I love you for it. Thank you. All right, guys, well, it's time to wrap this up because I've only got so much battery in this poor camera and uh, we've come close to exhausting everything and I've got a lot of editing ahead of you. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button on it. Also, come over and follow me on Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a really social guy. Chances are, if you ask me a question, I'll respond to it unless I'm busy eating a ham sandwich or playing a video game. All right, guys, one of the things I forgot to mention is the ELR actually has nine cubic feet of storage space, which for an EV car is actually quite a bit. And to demonstrate this, I am 293 pounds. You're never gonna lift up anything and put it in this car, it's 293 pounds. So if I can get in the trunk, you're probably good. Can I get somebody to close that door for me? If you ever do find yourself in this situation though, you probably shouldn't be buying cars like this and think about your life a little more. Let's see if we can get out of here now. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, let's see other car reviewers climb in the trunk to prove storage space. Ta-da! And people say I'm fat. Bye!
Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself.